Welcome back. So there are stars, then there are superstars. There's also proto stars and neutron stars, but we are about to talk to a star that is in a league of his own. That star's new book is called To Infinity and Beyond, A Journey of Cosmic Discovery. Join us live at 7, astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. Good morning. How are you doing, friend? Good morning to you. I'm, I'm glad you're doing some universe. We also have a little bit of universe every day in us. We really do. I mean, you are so good at getting the public engaged at the cosmos. I mean, these complex subjects, what can we expect in your new book? Yeah, so the book, the, the goal of the book, which is an extension of my podcast, the Star Talk podcast, has three strands of DNA. There's the science, then there's pop culture, and then there's humor. And what we found is that when we stitch those together, people and deliver the science that way, people come back for more. And, we, and that was such a successful experiment that we, we created an entire book showing the journey of us humans on Earth's surface looking up, not only wondering what's there, but saying, can we get there? Like, how would you get to the moon if you didn't have rockets or oh, maybe have a balloon? Will a balloon get you to the moon? So, so these dreams, however impossible they may have sounded at the time, would some would have to wait for science and technology. And but is it waiting or is it pulling the science and technology behind it? And so this is this is an exploration of this the, this spirit journey of the human quest to leave Earth. Oh. Now, personally, I happen to like Earth, so I'm not one of those <laughs> <laughs> who wants to just escape. But uh, throughout, there's scenery, right? Mm -hmm. There's 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 a topic that we saw covered in a in a movie, and I'll talk about how they did in the movie. Did they do it right? Did they do it wrong? Could they have done it better? And that's the pop culture dimension that guides you along, keeping your interest. Yeah, because I feel like Hollywood is a lot of ways that the public gets to see space in terms of movies and TV shows. So it'll be interesting to see, see if they get it uh, uh, exactly right. But in this book, can you share maybe one or two things that you found just so fascinating while writing this? Oh, yeah, just the, 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 the way to connect things back to you. Just for example, if we talk about living on planets, on Earth, we're Earthlings, right? And if you're on Mars, you're a Martian. If you're on Venus, you know, you'd say you're a Venusian. But the actual way to turn Venus into being of Venus, that's not the right word. The correct word of being of Venus is venereal. <laughs> the problem is the, the medical doctors <laughs> got to that word before we did. Because Venus is the goddess of love and beauty and all that goes with that, uh -huh. all right? Yeah. So, so, so this are, these are little tidbits. They're like biscuits that you taste along the way just to see what these fits and starts have been in our attempt to understand the universe. And then I'll talk about some stuff. When we talk about the density of things, mm -hmm. I said, well, wait a minute, the Hulk starts out as David Banner and then he just, he expands out to become the Hulk. And, and is it the same mass as David Banner? If so, then he's really low density. He'd be like a beach ball and you could just flick him and he bounced down the street, but <laughs> probably he has mass. So where did he get the mass from? All right. These are questions you can ask and, and bring to bear on our pop culture stories. And my, but the biggest question about the Hulk is how come his pants still fit? That's, that's I was going to say that's that. the one I, I don't, Never understood I, I, that. I need to know the answer to that question. I mean, the yeah. Hulk storyline would be yeah. completely different if you could just bounce him away like a beach ball. That would be a completely <laughs> different movie. <laughs> um, different, the breeze kicks up. Yeah. <laughs> some fans, you know, and there's the Hulk floating. Around. Yeah, Hulk does not do beach well. He's like, I got, I got to stay away from the coast. That's not great. Um, how much do we still just not know about the universe? Yeah. So uh, you might have heard of dark matter and dark energy. Dark matter, we can measure it. It's 85% of the gravity of the universe, and we don't know what's causing it. It's not black holes or dark stars. It's, we don't know. It is not any of what is familiar to us. It's a mystery. Dark energy, this mysterious pressure in the vacuum of space, forcing the universe to accelerate in its expansion. We don't know what's causing that either. If you add those up, it's 96% of what is driving the universe. So we know enough about the universe to quantify our ignorance. And everything you know and love, the laws of physics, chemistry, biology, are in 4% of the, 
of what is driving the cosmos. That is incredible. We, we know it's so humbling. little. We know so little. It's, it's humbling, yes. It really is. Yes, but I find it exciting. Some people are terrified and they got to have an answer. When I was a kid, nine years mm -hmm. old, my first night sky was my local planetarium. I grew up in New York City where there is no night sky, mm -hmm. so you have to fake it with a planetarium. Yeah. But that was my first night sky. What attracted me was not how much we knew, but how much we didn't yet know. And as a scientist, you have to, at some point, learn to love the questions yeah. themselves. Yeah, you Because really that is do. your driving force Neil, of your curiosity. it has been such a pleasure chatting with you this morning. Neil deGrasse Tyson, his new book, To Infinity and Beyond, A Journey of Cosmic Discovery. Thank you so much, Neil. Yeah, th thanks for your interest.